My name is Gary Hedrick, co-founder of San Clemente Green, which represents nearly 5,000 concerned citizens living in harm's way. We call for denying this permit until further examination of the claims made by LPI can be more thoroughly examined. There is no need to rush this decision. The Coastal Commission should heed the warnings from a recent Congressional Task Force regarding nuclear waste at San Onofre, in which we were participants. The task force, established by Representative Mike Levin, was co-chaired by Len Herring, a retired Rear Admiral, and Greg Yasko, former chairman of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The task force of 33 members included elected officials, representatives from the nuclear industry, concerned citizens, and four members of Edison's Community Engagement Panel. For the most part, people on this diverse task force agreed that we must keep the spent fuel pools intact until a dry fuel handling facility, also called a hot cell, can be built. Otherwise, we will have no contingency plan for a damaged or leaking canister over the next few decades while the waste remains on site for a required period of cooling. The following excerpts are from Representative Levin's June 26 press conference regarding the findings and recommendations of the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station Task Force. We are going to be considering federal legislation that requires spent nuclear fuel canisters to have a design life of at least 100 years. Failure risks of canisters due to stress corrosion cracking must not be overlooked. And I'm grateful to our members of the task force that highlighted the issues specifically with the Holtec canisters being used at songs. The work of the uh, task force really solidified for me the importance uh, of uh, not uh, being satisfied with the uh, current Nuclear Regulatory Commission and Department of Energy structure. Uh, and uh, the canister issue is one that was reinforced again not something that um, we haven't heard, but specific legislation at the federal level mandating a hundred year life uh, for the, the design of nuclear fuel canisters. And then uh, making sure that uh, we're doing everything possible uh, with regard to inspection. You see what they're doing in other parts of the world. Um, Switzerland immediately comes to mind at uh, some of their hardened and enclosed buildings and their use of the uh, thicker cast as opposed to the thin wall canisters. Uh, we must do better. The proposed experimental method for monitoring and maintaining these thin pressurized canisters has yet to be approved. Spraying a thin metallic coating on a surface defect is totally inadequate for repairing these canisters if they're needed for on-site or off-site transportation. The task force recognizes the need to consider proven monitoring and maintenance systems currently in use specifically mentioning the Zwilleg facility in Switzerland. The task force recommends a study be done regarding many of these matters by the National Academy of Sciences. We need time for that. Our facility also boasts a hot cell, which we use to inspect and repair casks containing high-level waste. We can also use this room to transfer spent fuel elements to different containers if necessary. Everything is controlled remotely with the help of cameras and indirect eye contact through a lead glass window. As the handling of high level waste requires the most stringent safety measures, the hot cell is built to be secure against external influences such as earthquakes or airplane crashes. Our waste is now ready for intermediate storage. The casks with spent fuel elements are stored in the cask storage hall for high level waste. The casks are built to block radioactive radiation, while at the same time protecting the contents from external influences. Even some of the casks that have been utilized over the years are nearing or have passed on their life expectancy. If you look through the report, you see the storage protocols um, that are now being utilized. Um, seem to be very dysfunctional um, and almost driven by in industry um, as opposed to the regulatory safety requirements that uh, provide us the opportunity for both the safe handling, the storage, and long-term commitment for its, um, for its 
it's monitoring. Um, once it's stored, it isn't. It's not like um, you know a garbage uh, pile. It'll decrease de de by itself. It takes hundreds of thousands of years for this material to no longer be a hazard to our environment. Um, and we need to monitor how that works. And I think that this report again clearly shows how the relaxations over the course of time have put us at risk. And I hope that um, this is a piece of the report um, that that really comes out and, and, um, and causes people concern um, as to where we're going. What Edison is telling us today, and even in the interviews that we had with them, is that they are complying with the regulation that is currently provided to them. And that regulation is what we are saying is flawed and needs to be reconsidered. Yeah, Rob, I would, I would say, that I, I agree with uh, the committee standing on the standpoint that if you are given a regulation to meet, I believe most uh, corporations in the nuclear industry will meet those regulations. And what we are saying is that it can be better. Um, what we are suggesting as a whole is that they need to be analyzed in a much more deliberate fashion, um, that money needs to be put aside and safety needs to be the driving factor associated with how the industry moves forward in the storage of spent nuclear fuel. You need to prioritize the safety and health and well-being of our community, uh, not the profits of the nuclear industry. The San Onofre Task Force has served to advise Congress on a full spectrum of issues, many of which apply to the decision you face today. The applicant has rushed this process for reasons of their own. Your independent consultant has been limited by the incomplete analysis of ASME standards. If you accept the report at this stage, there may be huge unintended consequences when we confront a situation that requires more than a fresh coat of nickel plating. Please allow time for us to better understand the complexities of their technical conclusions while ASME standards are being completed. At this point, there are more questions than answers regarding how Edison's proposal confirms that they will have the ability to monitor, maintain, and repair canisters far into the future when the opportunity finally comes to move this most toxic substance to its final destination. If ever there was a time to apply the precautionary principle, it is now as you consider the future of our magnificent coastline. Let's not rush this crucial decision.